Hi my friends and welcome back to part two of my big book haul video. I know, shame on me, um, I went a little crazy with Black Friday and it was my birthday. But yeah, I promise that the next few months I'm not gonna buy any books. I'm gonna work on uh, reading the ones I have, on diminishing my um, yeah pile of unread books, my TBR pile. So maybe I'll make a challenge out of that. Let me think about it. But yeah, let's get started with these because we have quite a few left. So let's start with the suspense slash thrillers. Although the first one I don't think is actually part of suspense or thrillers. It's maybe more a dystopy. Um, is that, do you say that the same way in English? I hope so. It's the one by John Mars. Maybe you've seen the Netflix series. I just now saw that it is on Netflix. I had no idea. Um, but yeah, the story sounded really interesting. It's about we are in our world and um, there is this new dating app that basically tests your DNA and promises to find your soulmate based on your DNA. The founders of the app say that they found this gene that, yeah, lets them pick or allows them to tell you who is genetically your perfect match. And so people are doing this and you can already, yeah, kind of <laughs> see where this leads to conflicts. So marriages get broken up because, because people find out, okay, I'm not married to my actual soulmate and other people maybe find their soulmate, but it turns out, hey, I don't really get along as well as I should <laughs> with somebody who is my soulmate. So a lot of potential for conflict. And I really enjoy these stories that are about technology when technology is too overreaching. I find them very interesting and scary because if you think about it, these are scenarios that maybe one day might happen. So right now I'm glad it's just a dystopic, a dystopy. Anyways, um, it gives me Black Mirror vibes. I wanted to mention that too. I don't know if you saw the episodes on Netflix, but yeah, that's what I get. And I'm very interested to see how this is. And maybe I'll watch the Netflix show afterwards. We'll see. The next thriller is Rock, Paper, Scissor by Alice Feeney. And it is about a couple where, um, how did they describe it? The guy, it's Mr. and Mrs. Wright, and Mr. Wright is, um, has face blindness. So he can't even recognize his wife. I guess he can't recognize faces in general, maybe he has no memory. And yeah, obviously his wife has gotten very sick of this condition and feels like she isn't seen. And so they win this trip um, to go on a vacation together and they go, but it turns out that it's not an accident that the both of them um, ended up on this trip, that it was planned and one of them has a secret and maybe there's also somebody who doesn't want them to live happily ever after. So I think it sounds very interesting. I do wonder though how it works when you're a partner with somebody who is, has face blindness. Like, I don't know how that works. If you live with someone and you don't recognize them, so every day does this person have to tell you, by the way, I am your wife? I don't know. I have a couple of questions, but I'm excited to see how they are answered in this book. Now we have um, historical fiction, I guess you could say. It's The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I've heard a lot about Kristen Hanna too. I've seen her name uh, in a bunch of places. I think she wrote Firefly Lane, which is very popular. Um, I haven't read any of her books and this is the first one I'm going with. It is set in Alaska in 1974 and the Albright family is moving to Alaska, the basically the last frontier here in the US. The Albright family consists of Mr. and Mrs. Albright and Mr. Albright has just returned from Vietnam War and he definitely has some challenges um, with what he has seen I guess. He has probably PTSD, I don't think it's called it here but he's very volatile mentally. He has some mental problem and his wife is very much in love and basically uh, wants to make him happy and that's why they moved to Alaska. There's also the, is she 12 or 13? 12 or 13 year old daughter, and she basically has no say. She has to move to Alaska too. So they are now in Alaska, and um, winter's coming. You know, it's very, it's dark, it's very isolated. They are in a community, but 
yeah, once winter comes, it's very different and life is hard. On top of that, the health of the husband, Mr. Albright, starts deteriorating. And soon the wife and the little girl are basically on their own and have to escape or rescue themselves. So I think it sounds a lot like family drama, um, yeah, dealing with, yeah, liberating yourself. I think it's strong women again. Um, and just living in Alaska is also something that I'm interested to read about. I've always wanted to go there. So very interested uh, in this too. I, I know I say that all the time. I'm interested in all these books, but yeah, looking forward. Now the next two, as I said in the first video, I'm looking to read more yeah, fairy tale retellings. I don't know why, it's just in my head right now. I'm in the mood to read them. And I have two more fairy tale retellings. One of which is A White So Red by Katie Jones and the other one is Lost Boy by Christina Henry. So A White So Red is basically Snow White, a retold. And from the back here, it sounds like it's pretty close to the um, actual um, original. Um, and it says it's a dark fairy tale retelling. So I'm just thinking it's probably close to original, original but maybe a little bit more brutal a bit a little bit more for more mature readers not for children so yeah i'm looking forward uh, as i said before let me know if you maybe want me to do a fairy tale special i have four books now so i could do something like that we'll see the other one christina henry is a name if you're into fairy tale retellings i think you know this name she does an amazing job i've seen great reviews um, and so I'm interested to read Lost Boy, my first fairy tale retelling by Christina Henry. It's about the story of Peter Pan and I'm just gonna read the back because it's perfectly summarized and it's it sounds very thrilling. There is one version of my story that everyone knows and then there's the truth. That is how it happened. How I went from being Peter Pan's first and favorite lost boy to his greatest enemy. Peter brought me to his island because there were no rules and no grown-ups to make us mind. He brought boys from the other place to join in the fun, but Peter's idea of fun is sharper than a pirate's sword. Because it's never been all fun and games on the island, our neighbors are pirates and monsters. Our toys are knife and sticks and rock and the kind of playthings that bite. Peter promised we would all be young and happy forever. Peter lies. So I'm so interested. It sounds, yeah, like Peter Pan, one of the boys that he brought to his land, basically becoming his enemy. Uh, yeah, I already love this book and I haven't even read anything, but I will do so soon. All right, with this book, I can't really say that it is... Um, a new book. I have owned Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens before, but the one I had was a uh, paperback and it was cut off in the front. And I hate when they do that to books. I hate when they cut off the cover um, and write something like bestseller. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. So I love the story. It was one of my five star reads this year. So I just had to get the pretty deluxe edition to put in my shelf and to look at. I know sometimes you just have to treat yourself. But yeah, I gave the old version already to a friend of mine. So otherwise I would show you the difference, but it's, it looks so pretty and look at the, the drawing. And we have a few more in here. Let's see. Oh, actually, no, that was it. Yeah, but I'm really happy about it. Um, I'm just gonna say briefly, it's a coming of age story. We follow Kaya who lives in the marshland in North Carolina and she's growing up very independently on her own. She has to raise herself in the wilderness and she's an outcast. The town views her off as something, yeah, it's not part of their group. And when there's a crime happening, somebody gets killed, they are very quick to blame her for it. So that's the basic line. If you wanna know about it, watch my five-star read video um, that I posted earlier this year. And yeah, it was just fantastic. And I can just tell everybody 
Please read Where the Crawdads Sing, sing if you haven't done so yet. Now let's get to the last books here. They are very special. I went to my uh, favorite bookstore and they had a table that basically said blind date with a book. And all the books on the table were wrapped up in paper and somebody had written um, something on the paper about the book, but you had, have no idea which book is inside that paper. I don't know if I'm expressing myself clearly here, but I'll just show you. So for example, this one, it's wrapped like this. It says a queer humorous coming of age story and that's it. You have no idea what's inside. And so I just picked the three that I thought sounded most interesting. And this was one of them because who doesn't love a queer humorous coming of age story? And also who doesn't love pizza? So I'm very excited to find out what it is. I have honestly no clue. Um, neither do I have a clue about the other two. The, uh, which are Mother-in-Law from Hell, a dark domestic horror. Uh, I picked this one because this was the first year that I started reading horror and surprisingly I did not expect it. I enjoyed it a lot. So I want to read a few more horror books um, sprinkled in and I had none on my TBR so I needed to change that and pick this one up. So we'll find out soon hopefully which cover is hidden underneath the paper. The last one is Cli-Fi, one of Barack Obama's favorite books of 2021. I'm guessing it's about climate change, probably environmental problems, and you know, it's a big topic um, in politics, in society in general, and I probably don't know as much about it as I should, so this was another one that I picked. And yeah, so all these three, I'm thinking I might do another video where I unwrap them and do like a yeah my first impression um i have honestly really no idea what they could be maybe you guys have from just these three descriptions if you do let me know what you think uh we'll find out soon i'll do an unwrapping but yeah until then um there's le nothing left for me to show you or say other than have a fantastic week and uh Stay safe, stay, stay healthy, and I hope to see you soon.